It is Tuesday, March 29th, 2022, and I'm in Jersey City, New Jersey, to attend my first Brian Jonestown Massacre concert. The venue, the White Eagle Hall, is right down the road, about a half mile from here, but I begin outside the William L. Dickinson High School for purely sentimental reasons, because my dad, who grew up in Jersey City, graduated from here in March of 1944. He was 17 years old and immediately joined the Navy. By the next summer, he was crossing the Pacific on a destroyer escort when the A-bombs were dropped and the war ended. He eventually became a journalist, raised a family of five kids along with my mom, and passed away in 2019 at the age of 92. And the story goes, he left school in March to join the Navy, less from a sense of duty, and more because he was failing French. So I am heading down North Avenue toward the White Eagle Hall, which is located just on the other side of this overpass. You know, when you follow a songwriter as prolific as Anton Alfred Newcomb, just a simple walk down a city street is liable to evoke his music. As in this case, as I come upon the Jersey City and Harsimus graveyard, Harsimus being the name of a local neighborhood. The cemetery was founded in 1830, but as recently as 2008, it was abandoned and choked with weeds until volunteers stepped in and brought it back to life. Yet the story reminds me of one of my favorite Brian Jonestown Massacre songs, Forgotten Graves, off their 18th studio album released in 2019. The song strikes such a chord with me, especially the live version on YouTube, recorded in St. Malo, France, four years ago. I once commented, this is my favorite live performance of any song ever. As you can tell, when I use superlatives, I go big. So I am outside the White Eagle Hall, very historic in its own right, built in 1908 by a Polish priest for use as a community center. The White Eagle is part of the coat of arms of Poland. Ownership of the building was eventually transferred to the St. Anthony Church two blocks away, which converted it into a basketball court so their high school team could practice there. This is the same legendary St. Anthony's team coached for many years by Bob Hurley, whose son Bobby led Duke to two national championships in the early 90s. Inside the old floorboards of the court, now grace the two bars and the floor of the balcony. Also preserved are two handmade stained glass skylights, one featuring the image of Frederick Chopin and the other a famous Polish opera singer. All in all, it's a great venue with great sight lines and great sound and a great stoop to sit on if you get there early and you want to eavesdrop on the sound check. So all this talk of St. Malo, France, and my dad failing French in high school dovetails nicely with what I'm going to do now, which is go behind the White Eagle Hall, where the band's tour bus is conspicuously parked, and go down the stairs into the cellar of the building where a French restaurant, the Madame Claude Bisse, promises some pre-concert continental fare. And at the bar, I'm going to pretend I know something about music by explaining why I listened to the Brian Jonestown Massacre. So this is my take on what distinguishes the Brian Jonestown Massacre from any other rock band. And I'll provide it simply by referring to their style of music, which everyone agrees is a throwback to the sound of the 1960s. Because of this, the knock against Anton is that he's not unique. He imitates a sound rather than creates one. But here's the catch. This is what elevates his music to a level above imitation. If you looked at all the bands who actually pioneered 60s music and then saw what they did in the 70s, the 80s, and beyond, you'd find that they did either one of two things. They either evolved their sound to remain commercially viable, or they simply ran out of ideas and faded away. Anton's different. He has never changed his sound, and he never runs out of ideas. 
The music he makes today is as easy on the ears as it was in 1995 and his lyrics still as lyrical as ever. A YouTube commenter put it best when he imagined a dialogue between Anton and a critic. He actually wrote the dialogue out. The critic says, Anton, you cannot keep writing song after song using the same three chords. And Anton responds, hold my beer. That, in a nutshell, is the music of the Brian Jonestown Massacre. Boy, that was a great concert. Anton and the band, they were just on their mark. They played a lot of their old stuff, a lot of their new stuff. You know, with most bands, most rock and roll bands, when you go to see them live, you just want to hear the classic stuff, the stuff you've heard on the radio for years. The Brian Jonestown Massacre is different. Their new stuff is so good, you really want to hear the new stuff. And we heard that tonight. So here's a little sampling of the new stuff. Till you die 